Hi, Patrick Russell, EA, with today's Caliente Topic, what's a loophole? And how can a taxpayer correctly use a loophole to their advantage on their tax return? Let's start with the basics. Language, both spoken and written, is imperfect and imprecise. And in the world of finance and taxes, it also ages and becomes obsolete. Even the connotation of the word themselves can change. For instance, the word whip. It used to mean an object that you would use to strike something with, like a horse. Now, it's that sexy car you pick up the ladies with. It's this changing and imperfect nature of language that allows loopholes to exist in the first place. There are two main types of loopholes. One is created by vague language. For instance, S-corporate owners who work for the S-corp must pay themselves a reasonable salary. Well, what's reasonable? S-Corp owners have been debating that loophole since the day that rule was published. The second basic loophole? That's created when current rules are silent on a position, meaning something new, like an invention that is so brand new, current rules and regulations may not cover and are silent on how to handle, aka the internet and online sales. Most state sales tax rules didn't imagine the growth of online sales early on, and for years, online vendors prospered under that loophole, saving themselves a boatload of cash on that sales tax. This loophole has since been closed, by the way. Now, how does the IRS handle loopholes? Is there a procedure? Oh, you bet your sweet ass there is. Here's a quick profile exemplifying the course of a loophole. Let's start with a clever taxpayer who discovers a loophole in the tax code. If the taxpayer follows regulations, that clever taxpayer must request a private letter ruling before including it on their tax return. Essentially, writing to the IRS and describing your position and requesting beforehand clearance for taking a said position. This voluntary disclosure allows the IRS to get a heads up when somebody has a bright new idea. The classic private letter ruling that I found many examples of, pets. When Sparky runs a huge vet bill, the questions regarding claiming those medical vet costs as a family medical expense are plenty. What if you fail to request a private letter ruling beforehand? And now it's time to file your tax return. Can you still take your clever loophole position? Yes, the IRS has a backup plan. The Form 8275 Disclosure Statement. This form can be filed with the tax return itself, once again, voluntarily declaring to the IRS your bright idea and giving them the chance to nix your brilliant move. What happens, Pat, if I just let it ride and take a loophole position without first alerting the IRS? Hmm, nothing, unless you get audited. If the tax return is selected for audit, that will be your final opportunity to present the case for relying on that loophole position. The downside for waiting will be if the IRS disagrees and disallows the loophole. Whatever additional taxes you owe will also come with nice penalties and interest too. How do most loopholes die? You guessed it, by writing more rules to close the unintended loophole. Every year, the IRS, the U.S. Treasury, and the House Committee on Ways and Means meet to discuss and implement rule changes. It's a vicious cycle of cat and mouse, and it is also a double-edged sword for the rest of us to boot. Why? With every new loophole a clever taxpayer utilizes, inevitably this leads to even more rules and more oversight. And over time, society becomes uber litigious where the strength of a person's word and the honor of a handshake have little to no meaning. This has been today's Caliente Topic. I thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. Take care.